So this video is going to be about the Spanish-American War and how we got into it and how Bailey's laughing over here. Anyway, so, uh, all right. <laughs> Getting on with it. So what happened was Spain uh, had a large empire and it was in many places around the world. And Americans, a lot of Americans wanted peace and a lot of Americans wanted a piece of Spain's empire, okay? So America was divided here between the isolationists and the imperialists at this time. Some people say we're the best country on earth and we should be expanding, we should be in charge. Other people just want to keep it peaceful. So um, the war people won out, okay? And what happened was Spain was really mistreating the Cuban people. And we bought a lot of sugar from Cuba, okay? A lot. In fact, we bought all their sugar. 100% of Cuban sugar went to America. And it was all processed by a robber baron named E.C. Knight. Okay? So E.C. Knight gets together with President McKinley, and they figure out a scheme to get control of Cuba. So we had something called the Wilson-Gorman Tariff that we put on Cuba. Now, if you remember a tariff, it's a tax on imports. Okay? So any goods coming into the country... So any bit of Cuban sugar that came into America, we tax it at like, you know, like a $2 bag of sugar would now be $20. So America stopped buying Cuban sugar. Now what we told Cuba was, and you gotta listen to the wording very carefully because we're telling them to do something. We said, so long as Spain is in charge of Cuba, the Wilson-Gorman tariff will remain in effect. We were their only customer. When we put this tariff into effect, nobody bought sugar from them, and it collapsed their entire economy. We were telling Cuba it's time to rebel, okay? So the Cubans do. They rebel, and Spain sends over a big armada, a big group of ships uh, full of soldiers, and they brutally put down this Cuban rebellion, okay? So uh, they put them in concentration camps. Now, William Randolph Hearst gets contacted by President McKinley. And he says, I need you. I need your newspaper. I need you to help me start a war so we can take uh, Cuba away from Spain. Okay. So William says, sure, I'll do anything for my country. Meanwhile, he's raking in millions of dollars as Americans read his stories. So he says that the, the uh, Spanish are killing all of the Cuban rebels, okay? Putting them in concentration camps, torturing them, beating them to death. And he also said that um, they were raping the women in the streets, okay, and stuff like that. And the last straw, another story that came out that, that Hearst completely made up was that the Spaniards were actually skinning Cuban babies alive with pliers. So they would cut a little slit, take the, the pliers and just rip the skin off the babies, right? And so the Americans are reading this yellow journalism and they're like, oh my God, we have to help these people, right? So anyway, we get really angry and America wants to go to war. Now, E.C. Knight at the time wanted to protect his Cuban sugar investments. All the plantations down there were run by E.C. Knight. So he calls up President McKinley probably a telegraph, uh, but anyway, it might have been a phone call by then. He contacts President McKinley and says, you better get your ships down there and protect my sugar. I paid a lot of money to get you elected. And President McKinley didn't take too kindly to that. He wanted the whole fleet. McKinley sent one ship. That's it. Just to shut EC9 up. The ship that he sent was the USS Maine, okay? Um, so we sent that down to Havana Harbor. Now, around this time, when the, the Maine is pulling up to Cuba, a secret letter gets released to the public. And that letter finds its way to William Randolph Hearst. So now it's all in the newspapers. It's called the DeLone Letter. And basically it says that America is not going to do a dang thing about the Spanish uh, putting down the Cuban rebels. And that personally it called president mckinley a coward in the letter okay 
So American anger is building and building and building. Now, late one night, while the battleship Maine is in Havana Harbor protecting the sugar investments of EC Knight, it blows up sky high, okay? The entire ship is gone within a matter of seconds. Now, William Randolph Hearst, sorry about that. William Randolph Hearst says that Spain must have did this, okay, right? That's a logical conclusion. Spain blew up the main. <coughs> later on, we did some scuba diving, and we're talking decades later, and we found that the ship, the metal on the ship's hull was bent outward, not inward. A torpedo would have went in one, and one side and out the other. It would have had an entrance wound and an exit wound. When you look at the ship, the USS Maine, you see two exit wounds, which says the explosion, which blew it up, came from inside. So upon further investigation, they figured out that it was a boiler room. The boiler room had run low on water, and that, that's what had caused the pressure to rise and it exploded. So the entire war was start, started off of false pretenses. Spain never attacked us to start this war. So, whenever William Randolph Hearst is blaming Spain for the death of 250 Americans, the U.S. gives Spain an ultimatum. Now, the word ultimatum is not a definition, but you should know what it means. It's an ultimate decision to make, okay? Either you do this or this happens. That's what we're telling. So, either Spain gives uh, frees the rebels from concentration camps and frees Cuba or we're going to war now Spain contacts America and says okay we're gonna free the rebels we're gonna free Cuba and then McKinley says nah we're going to war okay so he goes to Congress even after this ultimatum <coughs> and gets Congress to declare war on Spain and that is the start of the Spanish-American War, okay? So, you got all that right there. Uh, to get ready for the war, McKinley creates the White House Situation Room, which basically is a command center for the White House where he can sit there and get real live telegraphs and battle reports and direct his armies and the Navy with the telegraph, which is a massive improvement uh, over the technology that had come before. The first president to use the telegraph in war was Lincoln. McKinley got to do it on a global scale, okay? He was, he was telegraphing the Philippines and stuff like that, which is halfway around the world. All right, that's it for this video.